where dragons dwell. We'll have to get out there and look around sometime. Hello, John DeGuard. How are you? Looks like the stream has started okay. I see my big giant head. Cheez-Its, ready to go. Crisp, refreshing, delicious Coke Zero, ready to go. Galandriel, champion extraordinaire, ready to go. And up comes the loading screen. How has your week been, John DeGuard? Are you ready for a big old relaxing weekend? Got anything fun planned? Just gonna hang out with your old pal Ed and enjoy a Friday night? All of the above. Good. Glad to hear it. Woo, Hopdanigans is here. Get some of that Chance Thomas soundtrack music going here. Map to Hobdanigans. Check. Relic and Forge Master. Oh, I've got plenty of task items to turn in. Although, most of them may not be Gorgoroth task items. Let's see what we do have. i got a lot of stony skin. Alright, why don't we start out by clearing couple piles of stony skin. So I've already eaten on camera and I'm doing task item turn-ins. That is a very aggressive start to the stream. Three! Three task item turn-ins! Uh, uh, uh. Four, four task item turn-ins. Uh, uh, uh. It's my goal, John DeGuard. I want to get through the entire stream in 15 minutes or less. If not, your pizza's on us. No, I don't even know what that means. I always say, Lotro's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Ooh, there we go. Honored in the conquest of Gorgoroth. You may be known as Galandriel, esteemed warrior in the conquest of Gorgoroth. That is fantastic. Reputation change. Ooh, there's all kinds of new. Who the hell's the Red Sky Clan? And more importantly, how did I get to maximum standing with a group I have don't recall hearing of. I have no idea who that is, but they think I'm awesome. 
Enmity of those douchebags. Okay, so now I'm working on Honored. Okay, this should be the final one because it only requires 90,000 rep points. So that's good to know. I can finally start turning in all of these stupid rusted scimitars with the Men of Dale. Where were we? Turning in stony skins. Oh, I had a little sliver of wrap. Sliver of wrap. And that might be... Task limit reach, 10 of 10. The good news is I've got two more pack slots open. So that's exciting. Title awarded, esteemed warrior. Deed complete. That gave me 30 more uh, signets. 20 Lotro points. Nothing wrong with that. And it starts me off on Celebrated, which that's, you know, important. And we can trash the Hobnanigans, Matt. You know, I just I don't have enough playing time to be able to try out for Zinger's All-Star Hobnanigans team, so I have to hang my head in shame. I can only dream of Hobnanigan's glory. Alright, the Hobbits have bequeathed a heritage ruin of knowledge. Nobody got a chance to type that into chat, so I don't have to give the free car away tonight. And I've got mail. There's not a mailbox here. So my mail will have to wait. Or is there a mailbox? I don't think so. I remember thinking it was weird there wasn't a mailbox here. That's alright. Let's just close that or I'll obsess about it horribly. I wonder what I got in the mail. I wonder if it's the new Victoria's Secret catalog. Yeah, I don't think I wanted to go this way. Um, I don't know where I want to go. It's pointing me not quite this way, kind of this way. I didn't really want to stop to fight a fire grim, so I'm just going to ride on. So that was kind of inventory management as well as task item turn-ins and eating on camera. No place to craft or fish out here though. I don't think I have to feed a lot of hippos.
What do you wish? I wish to feed your hippos. You know, I keep telling myself I should brew some coffee so that when Galandriel is doing this kind of crap, she can run faster. Run speed boost. And I just never quite get around to brewing that coffee. Probably because I don't drink the stuff myself. If I were on the dev team, you'd be able to brew a delicious cola beverage that gave you like plus 75% run speed. It would basically just have you on foot as fast as a uh, light war steed. Because that would be awesome and stuff. Don't murder the Easterlings. Don't murder the Easterlings. I want to murder the Easterlings. Is this the night? Has the day arrived that you finally conquer Fushambal? Yeah, Zinger, I gotta wrap this up so I can unlock some more quests. I hate to admit it, I'm gonna be happy to be... And of course I'm gonna find out I'm not anywhere near done with Mordor. But uh, I'd kind of like to move on from Mordor at some point. How the heck are you doing, Singer? Good to see you, my friend. I was just telling John DeGuard how disappointed I was I didn't qualify for your all-star Hobnanigans team when I went to tryouts. Just not good enough yet. It's the weekend, can't complain. You? I'm doing pretty good. You know, the last few Fridays I've been a little run down because I'm either having to come off of a 12-day uh, work week and I'm just wiped out by the time I get a chance to stream, or I've only been working five days in a row, but I have to get up at 6 a.m. the next day. And I did something smart. What? And took Monday off, so I'm not completely burned out after working 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the weekend. And then um, I don't have to be up early tomorrow either. So feeling good, feeling fresh, ready to play some Lotro. Ready to murder some orcs and take their stuff. So very, very slowly. And my boss tells me things won't be improving. Uh, I think we're all just finally rebelling against their uh, draconian demands. He was like, yeah, I think I'm going to have to put a vacation blackout in effect for December. And I was like, that's nice. I already put in for taking December 17th through 22nd off, and it's already been approved. So he's like, that's fine. I just mean anybody else. I think that means that my boss likes to think he can, like, say that we can't do stuff that we can actually do. And it kind of makes me want to test the limits when he says stupid stuff like that. 
So I'll have to curb that instinct to challenge authority. I want to wish a very, very happy birthday to our friend All Up Enya. Um, hopefully he's got something a lot better to do than watch me stream tonight. Hopefully he's out on the town enjoying his special day with friends and family and loved ones. Um, and if not, then that's cool too. Uh, but yeah, he uh, is getting ready for uh, Movember. You are brave to approach me. Why, thank you. I feel brave for approaching you. Turn the tides. Small what? act. Let's go feed the slaves or prisoners or slave prisoners or prisoner slaves or whatever they are. Oh, all of Benya's streaming right now. I just, I was setting up and I saw Gussie Moose was on and I was hanging out over at Gussie Moose's channel. I didn't see all up streaming. I might have to pop over there and wish him a happy birthday. Uh, let me get some stew from the cooking pot and maybe we'll do that. However he wants to enjoy his birthday, I just hope he's having a good one. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Gussie Moose is doing a 24-hour fundraising stream for Extra Life. Uh, she's doing 12 hours today and 12 hours tomorrow. And I stopped over there and said hi while I was setting up the stream. They're having a lot of fun, so if you guys get a chance, be sure to check out Gussie Moose. Pot and Finberry, hello. Geeks Tour, howdy. Oh, all up just finished. He has plans. Okay. Well, I got a chance to wish him happy birthday on Facebook, so I know he saw it. He liked my happy birthday wish. Oh, that's a warrior. He doesn't want stew. I was going to feed him. I am glad to hear he's headed out. Yeah, I feel like I'm going the wrong direction here. Maybe not. I think there are a couple of people to feed over this way. There's one over here. Wish it was feed the horses. They're easier to find. Gussie just broke her 3k goal. That is awesome. So lots of fun stuff happening in the Lotro community here on Twitch tonight. Does that mean Cord has to wear a kilt? That's got to be getting pretty close. And let's face it, he wouldn't have offered to wear the kilt if he didn't want to wear the kilt. So, 
he can pretend he's making some kind of huge sacrifice but we all know he'll be like ah it's so free and breezy the real question is is he going to wear a sporan under the kilt Please be the last stupid Nurnoth I have to feed. Nope, one more. So close. Feed the Nurnoth, feed the Nurnoth. I want to burn stuff. I want to set things on fire. Hey, it's a Nurnoth. Veldman, hello. Ginger checking in as well. We were just wishing all up in you a happy birthday and uh, talking about Gussie Moose's fundraising efforts on Gussie Moose One, uh, her channel, where she is doing a fundraiser for uh, Extra Life today and tomorrow. Gussie Moose has to dye her hair a different color, and they're trying to get the. Uh, Standing Stone team above 20k total, so Cordovan is going to wear a kilt if they do that. So that's all good natured fun. Oh, very close to the 20 grand. Then 2k. Nice. 20 is the kilt. Guess he will need to dye her hair for her personal 3k, though. I was glad to be able to contribute to that in a very small way Do myself. Not waste my time. Now we go feed the hippos again. This really is a stupid quest dynamic. Slabhead McGuire, first time on your stream. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Slabhead. Thanks for coming by and checking things out. Just working my way through some of the uh, Mordor quests out here in whatever the heck the name of this place is I'm at. I'm in Fusham Ball where all the Easterlings are camped. Trying to get in good with one or both of the factions so I can pit them against each other. Let the enemies of the free peoples destroy one another. Or some such thing. to the daily feed again. In other news that will be of great interest to every Lotro player, regardless of whether you're pro or con on this topic, I am excited to report that the local McDonald's nearest my office once again has McRibs. It's that magical time of year when mushy pork goodness becomes readily available. The ironic part is there's a really good new barbecue place that also just opened up by my office called Swine Dining and I've just been been hammering that poor place. I ate there twice last week and I very rarely eat at the same restaurant even twice in the same month. I like a very wide variety of things and the barbecue at this place is so good 
and it's so conveniently located that it's just like been eating there every week I've been recommending it to friends um, good barbecue reasonable prices good side dishes the only problem with the place is they serve Pepsi but they have Diet Dew on or not Diet Dew Diet Dr. Pepper on Fountain which as we all know is my third favorite diet soda um, But the idea of after eating swine dining still getting excited about McRibs uh, strikes me as kind of funny because I know just from a pure barbecuing standpoint, McRibs are complete garbage. But uh, I can't help it. I like them myself. A lot of people are disgusted by the McRib. I want to know what you think, the viewing public. Are you fans of McRibs? Are you disgusted by McRibs? Or are you like me and you're both? It is possible to be both. Mrs. Mustafa is thoroughly disgusted by me. Happily wakes up every morning laying next to me in bed. So, it's a mystery. I don't know how or why that works. I'm just glad it does. Firmly in the disgusted camp. Almost as re funny as referring to soda as diet. Never had a McRib. Okay. Wish we had good barbecue here in the UK. Well, at least you have good Donner kebab, so that's got to count for something. Pressed meat of dubious quality. There's a actually a local connection. Um, I believe, at least local legend has it, that the McRib patty was invented at the University of Nebraska. Uh, specifically for the idea of finding a way to sell more pork. There we go. Alright, the Sula Kill have been fed again. Metal Brew says, I don't think I've eaten McD stuff in about 20 years. You've missed very little. In a lab? Yeah, in the agricultural department at the University of Nebraska was like, what can we do with this pork stuff nobody's buying? Let's press it into a patty and put grill marks on it and pretend that it's rib meat. Okay, that's where the McRib came from. What? Let's see how we're doing on rep. Pretty close. Looks like I've got to go through the cycle about two more times. And I'll at least be neutral to the north. Got to grab the quest again. Oh, I can't. i got to go do the other quest and then come back and grab the quest again. Burger King is better. Let's not lie to ourselves. There was a time where I would have uh, actually agreed with that. And my nearest Burger King's the quality of fast food restaurants really seems to vary a lot specifically from store to store and I think it's just indicative of the management in charge of a given location the McDonald's down the hill from my office is very good um, they're fast the foods fresh they always get the orders right the Burger King nearest my office is not good there are a couple of good Burger Kings around town I normally don't get out by them very often um, but I am unfortunately located nearest not so good Burger Kings so uh, the quality of our Wendy's hamburger places tends to vary quite a bit uh, that would be my normal go-to preference over either McDonald's or Burger King uh, we have Hardee's here instead of Carl's Jr. Uh, those are tolerable uh, if I haven't eaten at one in a fairly long time. If I had to eat at a Hardee's once a week, I think I would be very sad. Although I do still like the Frisco Melt. Um, and those stupid cinnamon raisin biscuits they have in the morning. Now the Burger King breakfast sandwiches are yummy. Uh, but I'm also a big fan of the McDonald's breakfast burritos. They're just kind of cheap and the perfect breakfast for $2.68. Uh, 
sales tax included. What do you wish? I seek the grail. Oh, that might be a different game. That means Nebraska McDonald's have the fresh stuff. <laughs> you might be right, Zinger. That might be why I'm the only person on earth who likes them. I live close to the source. Food science. It's where a lot of stuff is invented. It's amazing that even with all the food science technology we have that Mrs. Mustafa still can't cook a decent meal. I should wait for her to get home before I start picking on her. It's more fun that way. I may be lying about beloved. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it. Our beloved XPM Mrs. Thatcher used to work inventing ice cream. Ah, very interesting. Oh, when you said the lying about the beloved bit, I thought you meant McDonald's, but you're referring to Margaret Thatcher. Had had an experience at a Burger King where they gave him a BB-8 kids meal instead of Han Solo. It triggered me, I admit it. Although... Let me see if I can grab this without dropping everything. I have a BB-8 coffee mug sitting right here. I also have my Lord of the Rings 10th Anniversary coffee mug. Uh, my package came with the coffee mug cracked inside of it. And I decided it was too precious to throw away and too broken to drink out of. It was literally split in half. So I just glued it up and I use it to hold pencils and stuff. So, where was I? So waiting for the for Ed to pan the camera down where we'd see a smattering of McRib Wrappers littered around his chair. Now I ate my McRib and then neatly folded everything up and put it in the trash. You broke Lotro. I didn't break anything. I think that was uh, either FedEx Ground or UPS or the post office who broke that mug. I mended it. I attempted to make it whole again. Although it is possible I might still have some McRib sauce in my beard somewhere. I was laughing. The kid at the window who gave me my order when I picked up the McRibs was like, Oh yeah, they're my favorite. And I was laughing. I went, the funny part is if they were on the regular menu, we'd all be like, Oh, those things are gross. I don't want to eat that. He started laughing. He goes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's a little bit like eggnog at Christmas. It's like, uh, oh, eggnog, I haven't had this in a year. And then about two or three cups later, you remember why. Oh, uh, yeah. That was nasty. Heavy cream with actual egg and nutmeg in it? Yeah, I probably shouldn't drink that unless I want to die. So there's another topic of conversation. Who here loves eggnog? Who here hates eggnog? Who's here is disgusted by eggnog, but drinks it anyway. Fortunately or unfortunately, eggnog season is also right around the corner.
Only if it's candy corn pumpkin spice eggnog. Three seasonal things people either love or hate. Yeah, a lot of people have an unnaturally harsh reaction to candy corn. I mean, I can understand you might having a preference for other kinds of candy, but I don't understand the hate for candy corn. The key is you just don't eat it by itself. If you mix candy corn and peanuts, it tastes like you're eating a salted nut roll. It's pretty good. Eggnog was a failure of mankind. Sargorith loves eggnog, but he has to mix it 50-50 with milk in order to choke it down. I kind of feel like exactly like I do about um, McRibs when it comes to eggnog. When I haven't had it in a while, it's like, oh, eggnog, and then a couple cups later, I'm like, wow. Drinking this is a bad life choice. I might just have happy associations with it. So I remember we always had it in the house when I was a kid, when Christmas time was rolling around. I think my mom liked to buy it at the store. Didn't I just find all these guys? Why am I having so much trouble this time through? That's just the mystery of finding the Nurnoth. I know they're not outside the camp. Nurnoth. Nurnoth. That's kind of how it goes, though. The closer I get to getting these stupid quests done, the harder they're going to be. Gore only likes eggnog if it has rum in it. FedEx broke the itemization balance. Geek's Tour is a huge fan of eggnog. Good to know. Nettle Brew has managed to avoid the eggnogians. Chevy Chase gulps some eggnog down. Can't you just use the rings on the mini-map to help? There's a thousand rings on the mini-map. The problem is Every one of these warriors has a ring above his head, and it makes trying to use the mini-map useless. The Nurnoth don't show up. Or they don't show up separately, I should say. There's five of six. I got to him already. Well, it is pointing me this direction, since that is my current quest. Zinger knows all too well I would rather curse the darkness than light a candle. Why would I try to use the quest tracker when I can just bitch about stuff instead? I'm not a smart man. You're not Nurnoth. I'm near a Nurnoth. There he is. That's my sixth. See what happens when I try to keep up with chat, Singer? I get a carton of it each Christmas, and that's about all I need. Yeah. 
the quart of eggnog goes a pretty long way. They just kill one of the cards to get rid of the rings. And Belanxmod checking in over here. Hello, Belanxmod. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. What do you wish? I wish for more wishes. Alright, well we'll keep the holiday theme going here. Who here likes pumpkin pie, is disgusted by pumpkin pie, both loves and is disgusted by pumpkin pie? I myself very much like pumpkin pie. And it used to be one of my mother-in-law's favorites, and much to her delight, I could make a competent pumpkin pie. So before Thanksgiving, I'd usually make uh, four pumpkin pies and hook her up with a couple. So I was her favorite son-in-law because I was her only son-in-law. But at least I ranked. Yeah, I have to admit it. I know it's pretty funny to crap all over pumpkin spice stuff, but I like it quite a bit pumpkin bread and pumpkin donuts and pumpkin spice hot cocoa and I'm not a coffee achiever and they don't make a pumpkin spice flavored coke zero so I don't get a lot of pumpkin beverages in but uh, I like me some pumpkin spice pot and berry has it every year at Thanksgiving geeks tour likes but doesn't love pumpkin pie um, pumpkin pie is actually kind of a baked custard. Um, pumpkin is normally spiced with uh, ginger and cloves. Um, that adds most of the flavor. So it's pretty good. It's got a nice smooth texture to it. How close are you to reaching the proper rep tier to continue? I think I need to feed the hippos two more times, one more time after this run. Do not waste my time. Then I might be able to advance this. I'm guessing since I don't really know the quest mechanics that well. Loaded with enough ice cream, it's okay. That's pretty much true of everything, though, John DeGard. I love ice cream. It's probably my favorite default dessert followed shortly by pies and then cookies um, Ooh, mrs. Mustafa's home she managed to get through an entire football game without getting tackled we we're excited about that and she may have picked up her own McRibs she sounded kinda hurt when I told her that uh, I stopped by and got McRibs on the way home If I ever really want to devastate her emotionally, I wait for her to ask me what I'm going to do while she's busy. And I say, I think I'm going to go shop at Old Navy and then uh, go out for Korean food. And that's pretty much like telling her I'm divorcing her. Um, but uh, getting McRibs without her is a pretty serious violation. She will make me pay. Sargareth says, pumpkin pie is my favorite pie. Yeah, it blows my mind to think that there were people who were born, lived, and died in their whole lives. They never got to taste ice cream because it hadn't been invented yet. I think gelato goes back to uh, late Renaissance in Italy. It's been around for quite a while. And I think it was Thomas Jefferson who tried ice cream in France. 
and uh, got an ice cream maker for the White House when he was president. If I remember right, Ben Franklin mostly went to France for the orgies. I think it was Thomas Jefferson who like brought back hat? the ice cream maker. It's a lovely new hat, Mrs. Mustafa. Let's what show does it, it off. Say? Love your melon. Love your melon. And it is covering your melon nicely. I got it from my fan Pam. Your spaz friend Pam? No. A different Pam. I have lots of Pams. You do. She gave me this in that little uh, wallet. Well, I'm glad you were able to use it to keep warm at the football game. And we lost. I left like a minute till and we lost by something. That's know. all right. The only kids who really lost are the ones who didn't even try. Well, I felt bad. And then I was like, okay, I'm done. See you. Gravity42 is checking in. Hello, Gravity. Oh, my gosh. Zinger is not a pumpkin pie fan. He will stick with apple pie. I like both. Geeks Tour's mom has made a fantastic pumpkin loaf since he was a wee one. Oh, man. Why do I have to murder these two? Because I was reading chat and not paying attention. All right, slot here. Ooh, I leveled. That's exciting. Flurry. Thank you. Sixteen hundreds, if I recall correctly, where they literally just froze heavy cream. Are you playing with anyone? Uh, I am uh, doing solo quests on the landscape at the moment. This shirt used to fit, and now you poor thing. I don't think it's gonna fit me because it's not like I've gained ten pounds since summer. Oh, or I've gained ten pounds since summer. I know, honey. The real winner is Mrs. Mustafa, who didn't have to visit the hospital tonight after the game. <laughs> exactly. No physical therapy is required. I didn't go to physical therapy. Damn it, now I want a McRib, Big Ed, and I don't even go out of my way to eat them. Closest one is in Smyrna. My apologies. Oh, they're not going to like you now. Do not waste my time. Oof. I should not waste his time. That's why I don't understand why Coca-Cola's been so slow on the sponsorship deal. I probably sell more Coke Zero for them than a hundred thousand dollars worth of TV commercials. She showed us the hat, but I couldn't make it out because it was dark. It says "Love Your Melon." It's a black beanie with a little logo that says "Love Your Melon" on the front of it. And my other photographer friend, Oreo. What kind of McFlurry? Oreo. Okay. Better than M and M's. It sounded gross. The correct answer was Reese's peanut butter cup. They don't have that. Yeah, they do. Oh. I'm going to give you partial credit A because you just brought me a McFlurry, and B Oreo would have been my second choice if they were out of Reese's peanut butter cup. And third, you're just basically bringing me treats while I'm sitting here playing video games. So that puts you in like the 98th percentile of all wives. I think your problem with Coke is their smallest promotional deal. It's 
probably a lot more than a hundred thousand dollars. What did I click on? Oh, I gotta go to the cooking pot. I got excited and ran past my initial objective. We were in Cancun a few years ago. The McDonald's across the road from our resort had McRibs on the menu. That's awesome. And I had to tell you, the Mexican people, bless them, they know what to do with pork. If you're in a Mexican restaurant and they don't have anything pork related on the menu, you should get up and leave immediately. You are in the wrong Mexican restaurant. Uh, I've talked before about this little fast food Mexican restaurant also down the hill from my office called De Leon and uh, it's very casual plastic forks and styrofoam cartons kind of place but they do these uh, street tacos al pastor and you can get the same type of pork on what they call the adobe de plate and it's pork that's been marinated with pineapple juice and chilies so it's uh, spiced up a little bit and a little sour the nice little sweet undertone it, they're just they're so freaking good they're even better than uh, butter on a pop tart look forward right into the camera okay although I've already had mine so I don't particularly want to smell these but go ahead You can hold it up to the camera if you want. The camera should autofocus on it. Should. It's probably just a big sloppy mess, actually. They usually are. No. Yeah. Oh, that does look pretty tidy. Mine were a big sloppy mess by the time I got home with them. That's because you're a big sloppy mess. Yeah, that's pretty much true. That's why I married you, sweetie, so I'd have somebody to clean up after me. Oh, and because of, of love and stuff. It could be true. She doesn't know. Uh, so, yeah, she's got her McRib. She's happy. That's the one dude I've already talked to. So we'll keep looking for more dudes. I need to talk to six dudes, honey. That's an excellent question. That's really weird. I was going to say a word and then I refrained. If Coke just knew he'd reach 200 fishing, that might seal the deal. Right? Do you know how rare that is? Or the fact that I occasionally get upwards of a dozen viewers, some of whom actually stay awake through the stream? That's the kind of public outreach that money simply can't buy. Carnitas. Oh, yeah. Carnitas are yummy, but uh, Tacos Al Pastor. Well, they have, they have five different kinds of street tacos at this place. Carnitas, Tacos Al Pastor. Um, there's a third kind of pork where it's crispy bits of pork. Those are really good. And um, I get the, uh, the Languis, the beef tongue tacos. And I know if you haven't had beef tongue before, you're going to be like, oh my god, that's the grossest thing ever. If by gross you mean delicious, then you'd be correct. Uh, the beef tongue is uh, roasted, and then it's diced up and seasoned, and it is really tender and juicy and flavorful, and it makes wonderful taco meat.
And then the fifth kind, I named three kinds of pork. Oh, uh, carne asada, the regular beef. If you want beef from the uh, beef from the belly instead of beef from the tongue, daily own the street tacos. Well, anyway, you get five little tacos in a carton, and they double up the tortillas. They're the little, small, like four-inch round corn tortillas, and they put uh, two of them together so that the taco doesn't rip. And you can actually pick up and eat the thing. And then the whole platter is covered with uh, grilled onion and sliced radish. And then they give you a fresh lime. And you squeeze the fresh lime over those grilled onions. And you pick up and eat the, the tacos. And it's, it's pretty special. And I've been trying to not hit that place any more than I've been hitting the new barbecue place. Because I could probably just go street tacos, barbecue, street tacos, barbecue. Eventually I'd wear myself out on both. And I don't want to do that. Slabhead McGuire's going to head off. Have a good night, man. Thanks for coming by. Hope you enjoyed talking about food. Sargareth, I'm sorry I'm killing you. Replacing Ed's face with the McRib probably netted him like 10 extra viewers. <laughs> Maybe more. If I could have gotten her to stand here all night and just hold the McRib up to the camera, who knows? I could have broken records. Barbacoa. Oh, barbacoa is good stuff too. Um, lingua, yeah, real Mexican places have lingua. That's it. I'm going to go get something to eat. Be back in a bit. <laughs> well, there's another killer Mexican restaurant that's about the same distance away from my office as De Leon's is, except in the other direction. It's called Rivera's. And this place is the opposite end of the scale. It's not, it's not like super hoity-toity fancy, but they've got a chef, I mean, that can cook. I go in there and they'll be running these just crazy specials where they might have like grilled fish or uh, homemade uh, chorizo soup with a habanero broth or um, they have like uh, roasted braised pork shank on the regular menu. Um, the guy who's ever cooking is just, it's the best Mexican food I've ever had and Omaha has a pretty decent uh, Latin community. We have a Latin museum here and South Omaha is is very heavily populated with Mexicans and Hispanics and Latinos and what? there's a lot of good Mexican restaurants in town. This place is in a class by itself and like they have a, one of my favorite dishes there they have something that they call the Taste of Mexico platter where uh, it comes with a couple of these uh, um, chicken mole enchiladas and one of their chili rellenos. And the chili relleno, it, it's, a, it's a big chili and it's stuffed with uh, a creamy cheese filling. And then they cover the thing with a uh, uh, pomegranate and walnut reduction. And, I mean, it's just, it's elevated Mexican food like I haven't seen anywhere else. At least not in the state of Nebraska. Um, and there's a bakery like three bays down from this place that caught fire. And it burned the whole strip mall. And now Rivera's is going to be closed for six months. And everybody in our office just loved the place. One of the guys I work with has terrible taste in food. And even he loved Rivera's. And we're all like, oh my god, I can't believe we have to wait six months to get Rivera's. And there's a pretty decent Mexican place that's more standard fare called Cilantro's. And it's right down the hill from the office. And we almost never go there. And it's good, but the other two places are better. So it's just like, sorry, you're third place. If we want Mexican, we'll go to one of the other two but with Rivera's closed, maybe I'll hit cilantro's once in a while. I 
think I just came back to the wrong place. What? Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Do not Daily waste feed. my time. Did I turn in the other quest? I've been so busy talking about food. I don't even I wasn't paying attention to what the hell I was doing. Completed a small act of kindness. Okay, I did complete it. Now we feed the hippos, and this should be the last time I need to feed the hippos, Zinger. Starting to think Ed likes Mexican food or something. Ed likes food. I think his workplace is the only non-food business in town. Every other place is just down the road. <laughs> You're not you're not wrong actually. We must have a hundred great restaurants uh within two miles of my office. Uh we're fairly centrally located and there's lots of commercial space around us and lots of good restaurants. We've got uh two or three good Thai restaurants. There's a couple of good Vietnamese places that are just a stone's throw away. Uh, the Ethiopian restaurants are not anywhere near my office. Those are a pretty good drive. So, I keep threatening to have some of the guys from the office try Ethiopian food, but it's not very practical because we'd have to, it'd be a long lunch. I did finally try pho at this new Vietnamese place, and it might be the best pho in town. There's a place down in Lincoln, Nebraska called the Pho Factory, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's worth driving to Lincoln just to get the pho there. Um, there's a couple of good places in town that have good pho, but not anything like Pho Factory. I finally found a bowl of pho in town that is maybe at least comparable to Pho Factory. If I tasted them side by side, I might still pick Pho Factory, but it's close enough to ask the question. But if you haven't had Pho before, it's this Vietnamese beef noodle soup. Um, and it's just absolutely terrific. They have this beef broth that they cook anywhere from hours to days, depending on uh, the recipe. And traditionally, you get this bowl of very uh, fragrant, fresh beef broth. Uh, that's been cooked down for hours and they drop uh, rice noodles into it and they actually slice traditionally they just slice uh, raw beef very thin and drop it right into the bowl of soup and the meat cooks right there in the bowl with the hot broth they'll serve the broth boiling hot and then drop the meat slices into it but Americans being Americans you get it with what they call either rare or well-cooked beef uh, they might put uh, little Vietnamese meatballs in it. They might put uh, little bits of uh, tendon and connective tissue, maybe a little bit of tripe. Um, and then they normally bring uh, fresh herbs and bean sprouts and jalapeno slices and a lime wedge. And you drop the herbs and vegetables into it after you get the uh, meat and noodles stirred about. And then you add maybe a little bit of hoisin sauce, a little bit of sriracha, just to richen the broth and uh, spice it up a little. Okay, so let's see where we're at here rep-wise now. I earned five Lotro points. Galandriel, warrior of the burning plains. You could publish and sell a Lotro Companion cookbook. <laughs> well, I don't have a good recipe for Lembus. I think that would probably be Lotro fans being what they are. It's like, we don't care about Vietnamese soups. How do I make Lembus?
That's pretty good stuff. Okay, so does he have a new quest for me? He does have new quests for me. Need for greed. Ball raiders. Do not waste my time. I feel like I need to get well, whatever the rep level is, neutral with both. Why are they still threatening to attack me? I'm neutral to them. And if anybody knows who the Red Sky Clan is, please let me know. I do not know who the Red Sky Clan is, and I am kindred with them somehow. Wow, the rest of us need good food to have while playing. <laughs> yes. Leftover chicken kebabs, string cheese, and an Arnold Palmer. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Red Sky are the Wozes in Agernath. Oh, okay. I didn't realize I had reputation to gain with them. That was pretty easy. Thank you, Nettle Brew and Zinger. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to take a quick pause. And let's throw out a shout out for Gussie Moose 1. I would mentioned earlier, Gussie Moose. Oh, that's because they changed it. I keep forgetting that. There we go. Gussie Moose is doing a fundraiser on her channel right now for Extra Life. I think she'll be going until midnight. So if you get a chance uh, to pop over there and say hello, I will not be offended at your comings and goings at all. You can let her know Big Ed sent you if you want. But uh, pop over, say hi, and it's a great cause. If you get a chance to throw a few bucks her way and help her break her goal, that would be terrific. Not waste my time. I want to stab him in the face every time he says that. Yep, got to go to the cooking pot. I did that again. can't feed anybody if you don't go by the cooking pot first. I'm not a smart man.
Sargrath says, geez, is there anyone in this camp that doesn't have a ring over their head? Exactly. I am near a Narnoth. Nernoth. Narnian. Oh, they're saying straight ahead. There's one over here by the wall, maybe. Yep. So he says he needs more food than that. I'm like a doomsfold uh, expert cook. I could be whipping up all kinds of delicious things for these guys. But it wouldn't satisfy the quest. Up oh, there's my last Nernoth. I'll hang it over here by the gold. Let's see how we're doing rep-wise with these guys. 2,400 more points should get me over the top. I gotta run this quest twice. And I think it's got a one or two minute cooldown. So for those of you in Twitch, if you were to get a McFlurry, would you want the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, the Oreo, or the M&M? Reese's. Peanut butter cup would be your choice. Oreo second. See Geek's Tour, I'm exactly the same way. 40 seconds to go on cooldown. That was exactly my preference of order. These Easterlings really have me over a barrel. Blanks mod prefers Oreo. That's what I'm enjoying right now. Cheers. <laughs> we ride for the stew pot. I will murder his face. I will gut him like a trout. One! Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to get this pattern figured out just exactly about the time I don't need to ever do it again. It's usually how these things work. High hats and arrow collars, white spats, and lots of dollars.
Two. Two Nurnoth fed. Uh, uh, uh. Nurnoth fed. Uh, uh, uh. Four. Four Nurnoth fed. I should work on a Foley stage. Absolutely, Sargrith. Five! Five Durnoth fed! Uh, uh, uh. Yep, now I got the pattern down, so I'll be able to forget it in about three minutes. Got one more cycle of these dudes to go through, and then hopefully that'll be all she wrote. Lightning. cared for his tone there. The way this works, Sargareth, you have to repeat the same two quests to build neutral rep with both. Uh, is that character panel? So there's this en enmity of Fushambal North and enmity of Fushambal South. And when you get to neutral with both of them, it unlocks the quests you need to move on. So, like I said, I got to do one more run here. And then I'm done. I hope. You know, and the shame of it is this is another one of those quest dynamics that it's like, ugh, I never want to do this ever again on another character. Still got 43 seconds to cool down. What a pain. Yeah, well, seemed like a good idea at the time. Somewhere there's a member of the dev team who needs flogged with a wet noodle for thinking of this.
That was my thinking, Sargareth. I just wanted to come in here and butcher them until they learned to like me. Flurry's getting a little soupy, so I'm just going to finish it off here. I could never lie to you folks. This is really yummy. That pretty much kills it. What? One! Uh, uh, uh. So now I've got the pattern down because I don't ever need to do this again. Or if I ever do come back to do this again, I will have forgotten. Somebody did an electro swing cover of that song and it's been stuck in my head for days. It's fighting with Annie, Lex's, La Annie Lennox's Into the West. You know, David Stewart from Eurythmics produced Mick Jagger's second solo album, Primitive Cool. So if you're blue and you don't know where to go, why, where fashion sits, putting on the Ritz. One of Mrs. Mustafa's favorite movies of all time 
She loves Mel Brooks. She particularly loves Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. Yes, exactly, John the Guard. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Huh. And there it is. Pushambal South, a small act of kindness. I don't get another new title for that. Oh well. I am now neutral to both. The Fusham Resolution. Galandriel, the situation here has worsened. You've done much to assist us. We only have one option left. We must meet with Kirgi and reason with him. Perhaps you could act as our mediator. Join us on the bridge. The divided lady is a fushambal of cold a mating to put aside the bloodshed. Trying mighty hard to look like Gary land, Cooper. Resources. Super Dusa. Yep, he did pass away not too long ago. Beckon the leaders. Who am I beckoning? Meet with the divided leaders of Fushambal. Hi, Freelancer. Galander, I'll explain to these two that there is no other choice as I am the only one capable of overthrowing Fusham Tomb and keeping these men alive in Mordor. Mungo don't know. Mungo only pawn in Game of Life. Why would Galandriel answer? This cannot be true as Galandriel has served me well. You have much explaining to do, Galandriel. That is, if you make it off this bridge alive. It seems we've been played for fools. This is the first time I have agreed with you, Kirgi. Bring it, sissies. Prepare yourself, champion, for death awaits. Get that champion for me, men. Pews must die. Who's next? Wants to have a go at me. Finally, I get to murder a bunch of Easterlings. How about you two? You two want to have a go? I thought. Looks like I'm going to end up ruling the Easterlings. Soft like little girls. Come here, Kirgi. Did 
Fang's dead. Malatex defeated. Do not waste my time. All right, Fushan Ball is done. That was a level of tedium that should not exist in something that's supposed to be fun. Conqueror's gold bracelet. Now then. You tell Thurindal everything you have seen. The encampment of Dar Mazur seems mostly vacated. Perhaps it was a staging area for the armies who we fought at the Black Gate. Fushan Bal concerns me. The men there are trying to organize. We need to maintain vigilance should their efforts progress. Still, there are other structures deeper into Mordor that concern me even more. And we'll go ahead and crush that too. Hi, Mrs. Mustafa. Are you done with this? It's all gone. Okay. If you want, I could take a refill. No. Okay, be on alert. Mrs. Mustafa is taking my phone from me so that I can no longer call for help. I blink it three times. And she's about to hurt me, and I need you guys to call 911. What the heck is that noise? Um. You. Hmm? Oh, hang on. All right, we have that crisis averted. We need to scout some stuff, apparently. And what's that? A relic of the last alliance. There we go. It looks like I can claim level 14. Three more tokens of service. I cannot yet claim 15th. I have to do some more stuff. No flex zone. Hi there, Ed. I'm new to the game. Playing from Brazil and loving it. Glad to hear it. Just as well, no one wants to hear me proselytizing about Star Citizen. Well, you never know. Ah, there we go. Lotro Stream is raising money for Extra Life. Go to Extra Life Org Team Standing Stone Games and pick a member of the team. Or go here for current streamer. Hashtag for the kids. Yep, Lotro is a terrific gaming experience. 
except for that stupid uh, Fuchal ball area, which was stupid. That's all right. The little irritating parts. Conquer warrior of the burning plains. Deed bestowed. Five more Lotro points, rep change. That was an alliance thing. Deed complete. Allegiance level 14. Fantastic. Holy cow, you defeated Fusham. Zinger fell asleep and missed me finishing that area. No flex zone is in the Lone Lands right now. Hello, I'm Freelancer and I'm an Altaholic. Exactly. Lagged off the road. Running sixteen tunes through festival quests each day proves it. Wow. That's a lot of festival. Excellent. They did not make it. They are suddenly fatigued. The structure looks to be an orcish arena for watching combatants battle to the death. to the what now? Death? Yes. Ginger says I'm focusing on Ark, but if I ran my extra accounts, I'd have 20 more to do on Ark alone. 
That's a lot of alts, Ginger. <laughs> 